Hello, I'm Art Cook with Arthur Cook Management Consulting. I'm here with Deb Brown, and we're going to do our second installment of Art Cook's Profit Chain Market Report. Last month, we spent some, we wrote about and we spent some time talking about how inflation's affecting the economy and how inflation can affect impact your supply chain. We decided after looking at that and what was in the news that it was probably a good idea to talk a little bit about what is happening with the Delta variant. And it's a lot going on around the world. Uh, there's a lot happening locally that we can dive into, but we want to spend maybe 10, 15, no longer than 20 minutes talking about what we see happening. So with that, I want to uh, ask, welcome, Deb. Hi, Deb. How are you doing today? Good. How are you today, Art? I'm fabulous. If I were any better, okay. nobody would want to hear about it. They'd think I'm <laughs> bragging or something crazy. Right. But uh, So you wrote this, you wrote an article that we're going to publish here in a little bit, and we want to clip, put this video at the end of it to where people can get a little bit of our take, what we've thought about when we were working on it. Uh, so when you were when we talked about writing about Delta and putting a little bit on it, why did you choose Delta and what were some of your thoughts associated? And what did you learn as you went and did this? Well, for one very important thing, uh, it is one of the things that the Federal Reserve is looking at before they make their decision about when to stop putting stimulus into the economy. Um, the Delta variant, what is going to happen going forward? And at that time, uh, when we wrote the inflation article, there were a number of different opinions as to where Delta is going to go. And it has, in fact, um, increased tenfold from June to July, the cases in the U.S. Um, so now it's really starting to impact economic data. Uh, there are uh, new mask mandates being reinstituted and new vaccine requirements. Uh, a lot happening on the landscape. So jumping on what you just said, with specific to economic data, what specific areas is it impacting and how is it impacting the market? Okay. For example, there are a couple of things that came out in the last few days. One is the Michigan Consumer Confidence Index, which is a measure of consumer confidence. It dropped about 13 and a half points from wow, that's June significant. to July. June to July, and when uh, that's that's uh, a mirror for confidence of, of retail buyers, and when confidence wanes, so does spending. It usually follows, and sure enough, yesterday, retail sales were down 1.1% uh, from June, and um, I'm sorry, from July uh, to the beginning of August, and uh, a lot of that uh, that number, I have to say, though, is autos, though. Is when autos. You, when you about autos, it's probably about 0.4%. Okay, that's interesting. So, okay. But, but, you know, still purchases of furniture and goods and, uh, you know, for the home are, are, uh, are slipping. Still slipping. All right. Okay. You know, um, within that, now that you've went through this, what are the two or three things that you can say are takeaways that people can use to improve their insights that you've learned in the last 30 days? Uh, I would say, I mean, not only watch the confidence indexes for, uh, for retail, uh, I would say watch also uh, watch the small business sentiment. Um, small and medium-sized businesses had a confidence level of 67% uh, optimism that conditions were going to improve back in March. Now that has been reduced to 39%. Wow, that's significant. What do yeah. you think What do you think it might take for that to recover? Uh, I think that we have to get a handle on the Delta variant for one thing, because that's, that's part of the problem. Inflation is part of the problem uh, with spending. I think at some point people and businesses top out and, and they, they pull back a little bit, especially as the Delta variant is advancing. Um, okay. let's, wait and let's, what is it going to look like in a couple of months? Yeah. You know, are these cases going to keep spiking? Are we going to have, we're already having trouble finding enough employees. Is that going to continue? Yeah. You know, one of the questions about, uh, consumer spending, we're in the last measure, as you meant, 
mentioned did drop, and that's from July to the first part of August. Is there anything, could there, could there be anything associated with um, holidays? People are spending vacation time, getting outside, doing different things. Is this a typical time that we see con consumer spending drop anyways? And is this something of larger concern? Uh, I would say that, that, you know, as we know that people are starting to spend more on services now that they're getting out. Uh, I just saw an article in Bloomberg that talked about uh, the vacation variants, <laughs> the Southern states uh, having spiking cases because people are coming down here. Um, but I'm, I'm also seeing um, airline prices fall. I'm seeing cancellations and bookings for hotels and airlines. Um, companies who are planning uh, big event, who, whose job it is to plan big events, they're seeing some cancellations also. Interesting. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, you got any questions for me? I do, as a matter of fact. Um, I was Here, wondering before, if... before you mm -hmm. jump into that, I want to interrupt and just add, for people that don't know us, uh, I'm in South Florida, uh, in the Miami area, and Debbie is just a little bit north of me by about 45 minutes to an hour in the Boca Raton area. So when Debbie said, in the South, similar to where we live. I just wanted to add some context to that. Okay, sorry for interrupting. No, no worries. Uh, in your, I, I was just wondering in your conversations with your clients, uh, as, as all these new spikes and mask mandates and vaccine requirements are coming into play, uh, are, are any of your clients doing things differently with regard to protections or spending? Uh, what, what is it, what kind of uh, feedback are you getting out there? My clients right now, what they are doing is there's more and more stricter requirements for you to come into the office or come into the factories that you need to be vaccinated. And the what they're starting to make is the only exception to vaccinations is if you have a health reason or a religious reason, and they're forcing the vaccinations they feel it's important to protect their workers. The other sediment is that they all want to get to work. They're saying enough dancing around. We feel they, they are saying that if you are vaccinated, that even if you do get COVID, you get it very mildly and that it's time to move forward. So that's a sediment. They're taking a tough line and it's difficult and they're getting some uh, resistance from some areas, but they're saying it's, it's time to protect our workers from both fronts, okay? Uh, the other thing you know that I'm seeing is in the Wall Street Journal, they had a recent article and it confirmed what I'm seeing with my clients. We've talked about inflation. I've seen some lessening of pressure on inflation, all right? I'm hearing that from my clients that these larger increases are not being pushed through, that's weakening. There's also a significant, imp I can't say insignificant, that's too strong a words, but part availability is becoming better. So the wait for it, lead times are starting to shorten up a little bit. Can't say there's any measurable, but there's this early feeling that the part situation is getting better. Expedites are down. Uh, the number of premium expedites is down. Uh, still spending a lot of money on them because freight cost is high, but premium expedites is down. And they also see an increase in hirings. All right. Are costs coming down at all? Pardon? Uh, are freight costs coming down at all? No, time? they're still high. And uh, from everything I've read and the experts I've talked to on it, we do not see that coming down in the, for the next 15 to 18 months for a couple different reasons. Uh, at the end of the day, during the when COVID first hit, many ocean carriers took the opportunity to scrap their most efficient uh, carriers. And they basically put them out the pasture, they got cut up and used for scrap iron, and they put in orders for new, more efficient vehicles or uh, ocean uh, carriers. And what has happened is we had this V-shape and it took off, uh, so they're short on ships. 
So what I've kind of going a little bit further into this discussion on this, what I've talked to my clients on ocean freight was looked as a commodity prior to the pandemic where people did not make long-term agreements with their carriers that shipped containers from Asia to the United States or Europe or vice versa. It was basically, they picked up the phone and they paid the price at that point in time. It was a commodity like buying grain or sugar. Now what's happened is it's no longer a commodity. So they're rethinking their relationship with their carriers and they're putting in long-term agreements to where they can fix pricing. What will happen is as the new ships come online in the next 12, 18, 24 months, the cost will come down, but it will be much more efficient because it will have much cleaner shipping and will have better costs. It's, uh, we just got caught in between. The other thing you mentioned earlier um, about the, I call it the jabs, the number of jabs that we have. United States is at about 50% of the population vaccinated. When you look at developed countries, I think the average on developed countries is about 40% uh, being vaccinated. With that, that's why the United States and Western Europe have had a, their economies have done well through this because they've been able to get uh, people in restaurants, people working at restaurants, people in service industries, and people in manufacturing, uh, we're a consumer economy, uh, getting going and taking off. In the early part of the pandemic, we didn't have problems with uh, our supply base out of uh, Southeast Asia and Asia because they weren't overly impacted with it. Now the Delta variant has come along and it's thrown a monkey wrench into what's going on. And we are seeing uh, where they're back to uh, shutting down facilities. They're back to social distancing. They're shutting down ports. They're shutting down uh, regions because they're saying you have to stay at home. They have to get the uh, virus under control because their vaccination rate is below 20% in South, uh, Southeast Asia and other parts of Asia, it's low. So what we're seeing, what concerns me is we see what's happened over the past 30, 60 days where our production and our economies have done well. And we see the lessening in part shortages and disruptions and the length of time to get them. So all of a sudden, there's a feeling of a breath of fresh air that we're moving forward. Now, what concerns me with the Delta variant in Southeast Asia, where we're seeing the social distancing, we're seeing facilities being shut down, ports being shut down, is that I know that's going to have a whip uh, whiplash effect on us where we're going to go back into seeing the shortages once again. But uh, our supply chains are resilient. Our people are resilient and they'll work their way through it. I know I rambled on, but uh, you got me with a good question, Deb. And I was able to get some, I feel some good information out. So you answered it well, because my next, my, my next question was going to be before you started talking and you already addressed it was, you know, what, what are you seeing in, in terms of bottlenecks with the supply chain and, and they are improving, but yeah, this, this is a real concern. Yeah. And a concern I have is there's a fatigue of workers. When I talk to the teams I'm dealing with, you know, they're, they are, these people, the people I deal with in supply chain are very, very resilient and they know how to get things done and they are used to working funny hours or doing what it takes to get the, get the product moving. Uh, but I do, there's a fatigue that set in. So we got to keep positive for them and their leadership needs to keep positive to keep talking about the wins that they're getting. But I think long-term is the fatigue that can set in. Uh, I think it just get burned out. Right. Yeah. 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 Any other questions, my friend?
No, that's that concludes my list. Okay, that's good. I think that's good. Nice, short and sweet for this. So with us, Deb, if anybody wants to get a hold of you, how would they get a hold of you? My my email address is DD Brown as in initial D, initial D Brown at DDB Advisory Services.com. Wonderful. So there's a way of getting a hold of Deb. And if you want to get a hold of me, you know how to find me, reach out and we can talk further. Thanks a lot for uh, listening to us today. I hope your day, week, and your year is wonderful. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.